irrespective of whether the current uh, oil reserve is offshore or onshore, still like w w if you find oil, does it mean that at some stage in geological history it was dry land? Ah, and, uh, no. Uh, the thing about island is that um, it, it mainly consists of Paleozoic and older rocks. So you're talking about quite old rocks, 300 million mm -hmm. type years old. And since that time, there was an upheaval at that time which formed the mountains that you, know, the, uh, that you see in the south of Ireland. Um, since that time, Ireland has been very rarely flooded by the sea, the, the, the landmass of Ireland. But of course the coastlines have shifted out and in, but a lot of the time uh, we've been a landmass in Ireland and it, there was a, it's been flooded perhaps uh, for part of the time in the early Jurassic and in when the chalk seas were uh, spreading around the world. But there, on the whole it's been positive, it's been a positive area. The offshore area on the whole has been a rather negative basinal area that sediment has accumulated into. So that the end result of that is that we have this ring of basins around the island that have much thicker and more recent rocks in than, than we have onshore. Um, and it's that that gives the possibility of oil and gas in the offshore area. But of course around um, most countries there's a, a continental shelf, there's a, an area out to perhaps 200 meters or so um, that the rocks of the onshore, onshore area tend to extend out into, into that zone and then beyond that when you get towards the uh, further out on the shelf and then onto the continental slope you have more chance of getting thicker, younger rocks because most oil and gas is found in rocks that are younger than the rocks we have onshore in Ireland. Almost uh, more, more than 80%. Most of the uh, oil and gas, not all, but a lot of oil and gas reserves are in marine rocks. So it uh, means it's rotten seaweed? That, that, that um, uh, originally were uh, carbonates, uh, were reefs and things mm -hmm. in so the offshore. Co coral reefs? Or yes, whatever. coral reefs, yeah. I mean, most of the reserves in the Middle East, for instance, are found in, in these younger rocks, but they were once marine. They're onshore now, fortunately for the people in. Mm -hmm in the Middle East, they're nicely uh, available in the onshore area in, in, in large structures. Um, whereas um, it's only in recent times that the offshore areas have got uh, any attention. Mm -hmm. As you said, like in the last 47 years you worked a lot offshore but was it mostly desktop based or did you have to go out offshore on research vessels to actually accurately collect the data? I suppose like most geologists, although I did a lot of field work in my early career in Africa and, and in, um, in Canada, much of my work since then has been to look at uh, data, seismic data or well data um, collected and, and worked uh, uh, on the desk. Although I, you know, I have sat wells um, in both onshore and offshore and, and been in seismic boats. Um, so, and e even in recent years, done field work um, in the Middle East uh, to, to, to uh, ground truth some of the ideas. On the boat that we had. No, no, on on, on online. Oh, sure. uh -huh. Online. 
um, um, in in Jordan and along the Saudi border um, to to look at at outcrops and uh, and the real rocks. Uh, one can get too far removed from the rocks um, because in the end uh, that's what you're drilling uh, rocks and uh, you need to understand uh, the rocks not just the pictures that you have from from your images. Mm -hmm.